from the pen of Ellen White. There will be hatred kindled against the testimonies, which is satanic. The working of Satan will be to unsettle the faith of the church in them, the testimonies. For this reason, Satan can have, not have so clear a track to bring in his deceptions, to bind up souls in his delusion, if the warning and reproofs and counsels of the Spirit of God are heeded. One thing is certain, that is letter 40, 1890. One thing is certain, those Seventh-day Adventists who take their stand under Satan's banner will first give up their faith in the warnings and reproofs contained in the testimonies of God's Spirit, and that's letter number 156, 1903. That's in Selected Messages, volume 3, page 84. The very last deception of Satan will be to make of no effect the testimony of the Spirit of God. Satan will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimony. Letter number 12, 1890. You know, it's an amazing thing that anybody can question the credentials of Ellen White as a messenger of the Lord and read statements like that. That the spirit of prophecy would be attacked and that this would be one of the final things that the devil would do. What does that tell you and me tonight? Inasmuch as the white lie is off the press, and Walter Ray, with great intellectuality and with vicious intent, has attacked the spirit of prophecy, is indicated that the last attack of the devil is on. And therefore we cannot be very far from the return of our blessed Lord. With such high academic credentials, Never. Dr. Kellogg attacked the sanctuary, but not with theological training. Only native genius. But Desmond Ford is not only a native genius. He has great academic credentials. And he's attacking the sanctuary. That's the major doctrine he's attacking. We'll discuss some of that tomorrow. But concomitant to this, he is attacking, attacking the doctrine of salvation, which, if anything, is even worse. But the two go together. And I'll tell you tomorrow how they go together. Under the guise of a revival, the doctrine of the law and the Sabbath are being attacked from within the church. Robert Brinsmead, the name that you're familiar with, he was once the highest advocate of Adventist orthodoxy has given up the Sabbath. Did you know that? It's given up the Sabbath. Former Seventh-day Adventist ministers are teaching Sunday keeping. You can join the church of your choice. Thus far, in the Pacific Union, which is a large union, 37 Seventh-day Adventist ministers have been dropped from the ranks of the clergy. 37. Well, this may not be the Omega. But it is, if it isn't the Omega, it has all the resemblances. The attack on the spirit of prophecy was in the Alpha. The attack on the sanctuary. And in this, we're getting, we're getting the two-pronged attack again. Exactly the same. It may not be the Omega, but it has all the possibilities of becoming so. Now I want to speak to you folk for just a moment. Where are you going to stand? I can assure you, you're not going to stand in ignorance. I don't know what you're doing with your time. But on the, in the fact that we are on the verge of the eternal world, I hope you're not watching television. We have no entertainment television in my home. Our lives are entirely too busy for God to fool with that kind of garbage. Television is entertainment by means of sin. If it's not violent or sexual or lying or deceptive or vicious, 
then it's not interesting. And I want to tell you folk that if you're going through to the kingdom, you're going to have to stop feeding your soul on that sort of thing. Where are you going to stand? You're not going to stand in ignorance. And I can tell you for sure that I know a lot of Seventh-day Adventists that don't really know the message. I plead with you in God's name. Study and pray. Study and pray. This is the message the Spirit of God has given to me. We have to be able to give an answer for the hope that's in us. Can you defend your faith? Or are you a prejudiced Seventh-day Adventist? You can be prejudiced, you know. Prejudge. You can be prejudiced in favor of that which is right. But it's still prejudice. You have to know what you believe. You have to be able to defend it in a court of law. Because every doctrine we believe, you will be stood up. Why do you believe? What do you practice? What is your life? A man not too long ago was brought before a local court because he didn't want to send his children to public schools. He wanted to send them, keep them home and teach them. And the question is, would he and his wife be allowed to teach their own children, not send them to public schools? The man was standing before the, before the judge, and the judge said to him, Do you have a television? Yes. Do you watch it? Yes. Case denied. He said, You let the world in with your television, and yet you say you don't want to send your children to public schools, they'll go to public school. That's the end of that one. Case dismissed. Why? Because he was inconsistent. Brethren and sisters, our lives have to come in line with consistency. Total consistency. No compromising. No borderlining. We're in judgment. We're judgment bound. The Lord of all the earth before whose eyes there is total searching of soul will look deep into your eyes. And his eyes are as a flame of fire. Where are you going to stand? I'm pleading with you tonight. I know the Omega's on the way. I know this church is under attack as all the newspapers and, and articles. In a lot of different directions we're under attack. But you must be grounded. And you can't stand on the sand. And you can't plead, I don't have time. If you have time for television, you have time to read the Bible and you have time to pray. It's a pitiful excuse when you say you don't have time. It's because you don't take time because it's not that important in your life. If it's important in your life, you do it. You do the things that you think are important. I do the things I think are important. So let us study. And so let us pray. And so let us be rooted and grounded in the truth that we may be able to stand where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Shall we pray?